Hey guys, welcome to another Python video tutorial. This time I will remake my raycasting game using Pygame instead of Matplotlib and I will reuse the floor and sky that I made in the last video. To better understand this video, I strongly recommend that you watch the floor casting video first. Raycasting is one of the simplest techniques to render a 3D looking scene. It's not real 3D. It is based on perspective, where the size of an object on the screen is inversely proportional to its distance to the camera. To draw something we only need this distance, so it is almost as we had one of those laser measuring devices and were mapping the space around us. We do this by passing through all the columns in the frame, casting array, calculating the distance and with the distance we calculate the apparent height of the object. In floor casting we did something more or less similar, but in this case we only calculated the distance that each line has to the camera and took the x and y coordinates to know where to sample the floor texture. So I thought, why not use these coordinates and check if there is a wall in this position? So I will start with this approach. First of all, I need a map that shows where the walls are. For now I will create a random map here, with dimensions of 5x5 five five cells and I will pass it and the size to the frame function. The frame is a matrix that has the horizontal and vertical resolution defined up here and has 3 RGB color channels. The frame function goes through all the columns and checks what's in each one of them. For this it has to calculate the angle of each column and sine of cosine of this angle. The second cosine here is to correct the fish eye effect. Then I also fill the sky texture and I pass through all the pixels of the bottom half of the screen to fill them with the ground texture. Before filling each pixel with the floor texture I will check if in this position there is a wall. I'm using the module function here because this Way the map repeats itself indefinitely and it doesn't give me an error when I test a position outside it. If we have a wall then we can calculate the height of this wall, or rather half of the height, which is simply half of the vertical resolution minus the value of j. After that we fill this amount of pixels with the color of the wall. For now I'm going to do everything in grey. And then I will put a break after drawing the wall, cause I don't need to draw the floor behind the wall anymore. So I will only draw the floor until I find a wall. For now it seems to be working more or less fine, so let's put some texture on these walls. First I will import the wall texture, the same way I imported the floor texture, transforming it into an array. Then I have to pass this texture to the frame function. And now calculate the coordinates of the texture. I have already calculated the coordinates for the floor and I can use one of these coordinates but I need to know the orientation of the wall. If the value of x is very close to an integer value it means that I have to use the y coordinate for the horizontal coordinate of the texture. For the vertical coordinate of the texture I need a sequence distributed along the height as I am repeating the texture I will use values from 1 to 198 and then I will use the modulus function to bring it back to the range of 0 to 99 since the texture is 100 by 100 pixels. Then when painting the pixels I take the values from the texture. I just need to transform the vertical value yy into an integer. And now I will add colors to the walls, because these grey walls are dull. I will create a matrix very similar to the map, but with one more dimension to represent the RGB colors. And pass it to the function. Every time a array hits a wall, we have to retrieve the color from the color map and apply it to the corresponding pixels. As you can see some strange things happen when you get close to the walls and the farther textures get messed up. The first one happens because you cannot adjust the texture to the height values higher than the vertical resolution of the frame. The second one happens because the distance between consecutive points in the floor casting is increasing, so the points that we get are often already inside the wall. And also it often happens that we jump over a wall, so they keep appearing and disappearing on the horizon. 
In short, this method of using the floor casting coordinates, although easy enough, is a bit problematic, so let's use a slightly better method, which is exactly the same method I used in the original ray casting video, with small increments in the ray. To start I will take everything I added here in the floor casting and pass it to the upper portion. The ray algorithm is the simplest thing possible, as long as it doesn't find a wall, the ray keeps going in a straight line. When it finally finds a wall, we calculate the distance n, which I will do by dividing how far the ray went in the x direction by the cosine. The distance is always an absolute value. And to calculate the height is a bit different. Since there is no more j here, it is the half of the vertical resolution divided by n. Here I am multiplying by the cosine of the difference between the current column angle and the middle of the frame to correct the fisheye effect. I am also adding a very small value to guarantee that there will be no division by zero. After that I have to calculate the texture coordinates, the same way it was done before. The part of the floor calculation only needs to go as far as where the wall starts, otherwise I will end up overwriting the bottom half of the wall. And I have to set the value of the shading, with the value of the height divided by the vertical resolution. But nothing happened here. What did in fact happen is that the ray didn't find any wall and stayed in an infinite loop. To solve this, increase the map size to have more walls around it. Now it works fine. But check this out. The texture scale is correct when you get closer, but some strange colors start to appear. And now it seems that the floor texture got corrupted. The problem is that the height value is getting bigger than the vertical resolution. With this the shading gets blown out, with values higher than 1 for walls very close to the camera. And the loop that fills the pixels with the texture values is overflowing and writing things where it shouldn't. In pure Python this would result in an error, but as we are using Numba, this kind of things can happen, so you have to be very careful. First I will limit the shading values to a maximum of 1, and before filling a pixel, I will check if that coordinate is valid, if it is greater than or equal to 0 and less than the vertical resolution. And now to make the graphics more interesting, I will add shadows and reflections. The reflection is not really a reflection. What I did was to take the texture of the sky and reflected it to be symmetrical. This texture I actually made from photos of the sunset of my city. I only added the sun there for the shadows that come later. When painting the pixels of the floor, I will mix the value that's already there with the texture of the floor. This results in a very interesting effect. It looks like the floor is wet, but it still lacks the reflections of the walls. To reflect the walls, when I'm painting the pixels of the wall, I will reflect them downwards. That is, while I paint the wall from top to bottom, I will also paint the reflection from the bottom to the top. I just need to validate beforehand the coordinate of the reflection to see if I'm not trying to go outside the frame. With the reflections ready, we can move on to the shadows. The easiest shading is the walls opposite to the sun. Here I will simply test in the direction of the sun if the x and y coordinates go inside a wall. If so, I will darken the shading of that part. This is already a very interesting effect, but I wanted to make shadows a little more realistic. I will start with the floor. In a similar way as for the walls, I will test if the floor coordinate is close to a wall only now with a bigger offset. So we have some kind of shadows projected on the floor, but there are some holes in the corners, which I will fix now. For this I will first test the offset only in the x direction and check if the floating part of y is bigger than the x one, and in the same way only in the other way around in the y direction. As a result we have these shadows projected on the floor, but there is still one thing missing. In the corners of the walls, shadows should appear where one wall blocks the sun off the other. For this we will go back to the walls and create a new variable, which will test if there is a wall nearby. This variable receives the value of 1 when true, but if there is already a shadow on this wall, it returns to 0. 
Before drawing each pixel, I will compare the height of the pixel with the X coordinate of the texture. If it is less, I will apply the shading. I just forgot to change the offset value up here. And now we have some proper shadows. If yours has a different format, it may be that the texture scale is wrong. In the beginning I was tiling them 2x2, two two, but for this to work correctly I need to tile them 3x3. Three three. So you may have to make these adjustments here. And I believe this way the game base is more or less ready. But to finish it I still need a final objective, that is the exit of the maze. Also I will introduce a function here that creates random maps. In short it's a random walker algorithm that starts on one side of the map and tries to get to the other side, removing some walls in the process. Its logic is very simple, if you want to know more details, in my original ray casting video I explain it a little better. So here in the beginning instead of creating a wall and color matrices, I will call the map generator function which also defines the starting position and an exit position of the maze. Then I have to pass this exit position to the frame function in order to render it. And also in the main loop of the game I will add a check that ends the game when the player reaches the exit position. When I'm drawing the floor I will check if the X and Y position is equal to the exit position and I will also check if it is inside a circle. If it is, I will first calculate an intensity value, then I will draw a translucent column in a very similar way as the walls are drawn. So when we get at the end of the maze, there's a semi-transparent column that has an interesting effect, almost like fog. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the movement function, which I improved a lot in relation to the floor casting movement. I added checks around the player to make sure he won't go through walls or corners. And now the rotation of the player is done with the mouse. But for this I have to bring the pointer back to the center of the screen in each frame and at the beginning I have set my game to hide the mouse cursor. As it is no longer possible to click the close window button, I added the exit condition using the S key. And that's it folks, I'm gonna stop this video here so it doesn't get too long, but I think it's a good improvement over the first recasting game I made. This maze game is pretty basic, but it can show off a little of what you can do with recasting. It is a bit difficult to generate more complex geometries. To try to compensate this, in the next video I want to explore the use of sprites. I'll make the code here available on my GitHub. If you have any questions or suggestions, post them in the comments. And if you want to follow what else is coming up in this and on other Python projects, then subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.